This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. As you might have figured out, uh, energy, renewable energy and non-renewable energy is a bit of a theme in this part of the bulletin. Let's swing back to the renewable side of things. Schneider Electric has launched a new standalone pay-as-you-go electricity solution that's fully compatible with mobile money platforms in Kenya. It's called Homaya. The Homaya family option allows energy providers to essentially lease the systems to households who will only pay for the energy they do consume. And this system doesn't require a constant connection, always on connection, to a mobile service. Network. Let's discuss this in a little more detail. Olivier Jacquet is the Vice President in Charge of Business Development at Schneider Electric. He's covering a whole bunch of areas, Africa, the Middle East and Latin America. He's with me in studio right now. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much for welcoming me. So how big is this market for off-grid, small-scale solar products? As you see, the impression you tend to get when you run around a country like Kenya is that there's a lot of potential demand. But how big is the addressable market? Definitely. And you know, at Schneider Electric, we believe access to electricity is a basic human right. And that's quite a strong statement because it means every human being on this planet should have access to a modern source of electricity. Mm -hmm. What does modern mean? Simply electricity that is efficient, safe, reliable, green. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, electricity is a source uh, of many basic things that enable to improve the standard of living for the people on this planet. Mm. It, it enables to bring access to health, access to education, access to economical development, and in some cases, access to safety and even women empowerment. So what, because we do know that at this point in time, this is roughly what, 2018 data, you still have almost half a billion people across Africa who are essentially off the grid, right? Exactly. And we've, and we've yeah. known all the benefits of essentially switching to greener, cleaner power for years now. but. Why isn't that, why aren't we getting more people onto the grid? Why isn't that process of getting more people off onto the electricity sources happening a lot faster? Actually, you're perfectly, perfectly right. In sub-Saharan Africa, there is 600 million people which are off grid. That's basically one person out of two. So you were asking me, how is the market? It's that big. If we look at the trends on the projections in the next 30 years, Actually, a lot of governments, private companies like, like ourselves, are putting a lot of efforts to try to improve the situation. But we have to compensate for the demographics in Africa, which is uh, booming. Mm -hmm. So the, the most optimistic projections foresee that 600 million people will gain access to electricity in the next uh, 30 years. And but that's on-grid and off-grid. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, population will grow, meaning that the number of people not having access will remain the same if we don't do something faster. Mm -hmm. But is this, is this a mature business now? Because, I mean, Schneider, you're not the only players in this space, right, with, a, with a, the, the household solar uh, pay-as-you-go kits, but is this a mature industry at this point in time that it can essentially pay for itself, or do governments need to provide tax incentives to essentially drive access? I think it's a shared effort. Uh, governments need to prepare the frame, legal framework in each country for private companies to be able to develop. On our side, we have to design, manufacture products which are affordable for those people who live, half of Africa is living on earnings which are ranging from 20 to $40 a month. Mm -hmm. okay? But what's interesting, if you look into the detail, you will, you will see that their budget, actually one third of it is spent on energy. Families living in the countryside without access to energy, they would have points of lights which are basically candles or kerosene lamps. Mm -hmm. A candle will cost two cents of a US dollar, but they will buy four a day, meaning that after three months, they could buy a solar lantern. And you haven't accounted for all the emissions problems that will essentially come down the line from the yeah. healthcare problems we're going to be facing, really. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, uh, private sector can, can play a big role, as well as government. And not to forget financiers like banks or international institutions. You mentioned legal problems, um, or rather legal barriers to entry. Are you still seeing markets where governments are just saying, well, no, I mean, if you don't talk about electricity, if it's a grid thing, you've got one monopoly, that's it. Private sector players can't come in. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because Africa is such a wide continent. It could embed both 
North America, Russia, India, China, and some part of Europe. And still there will be some space. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could understand that developing in very heavy infrastructure, a grid mm -hmm. in the entire continent is just unfeasible. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a mushrooming uh, number of sites based on solar microgrids or other sources of en energy which are renewable. Because there's no other choice. You cannot pull the, the high power line mm -hmm. to those very remote areas. Mm -hmm. But those people deserve development, like any other living in urban areas. So that's what we're trying to, to achieve in Schneider with these new products that we release to the, to the market because we believe it can make a difference first for those users who need it mm -hmm. and for the development of those regions which is hindered today. Right, one last question for you very quickly. Is there a business case for the assembly of these products within the African market? Because a big chunk, and we're using Kenya as an example here, a big chunk of the PV modules that come into yeah. this country, imported. Yes. Back to the example of the earnings per family, I would say that uh, buying a solar lantern is not a big deal. You know, they save money for a month, they can buy one, and then they, they can have electricity and lighting for free for four or five years. Mm -hmm. So that's really worth it. But when it comes to buying something more powerful, enabling to not only bring lighting, but ventilation, radio, a fridge, a TV. You need to invest in something that is more of a value. I was talking of $15 for uh, solar lanterns, more of a value of $100, $150. And for this, we cannot expect those people to pay cash. Mm -hmm. They will need to have a way of what we call pay as you go. Maybe they use it for a month, they pay $2. Uh, and after the following months, they have to pay another $2 which is meaning at the end they will pay the 150, but not at, as an initial spending. Mm -hmm. And this model can enable to, to go faster in the electrical, uh, rural electrification. All right, Olivier Jacquet, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right then, so onto the tech world, uh, Somalia to be specific. A tech summit over there has opened its doors for the second time in the Horn of Africa nation. CGTN's Abdulaziz Bilo attended the event to file this report.